All right, guys, excited to do this. So this is going to be part one of the product research phase. Uh, what I want to do in this video is just kind of go over right off the bat my ideology behind uh, what kind of product you're looking for and which ones make sense over others. So there's various ways to sell products. We can, you can really sell almost anything on, on Amazon as long as it's not crazy. And so really, it's up to you to kind of figure out which product you want to sell. And that's kind of the beauty of Amazon, right? And that's kind of the fun of it. But what you really want to do is focus on a specific um, kind of product with specific metrics as opposed to just kind of doing it holistically and thinking, oh, you know what? I would love to sell something like this because I love it, right? I want you to start having the mindset that you're more more like kind of an engineer that really take breaks it down into specific understandings of why one thing makes sense over the other, right? So you might think, oh, you know what? This product will probably sell well on Amazon, but instead of just kind of running off with that, you want to make sure you want to look at the data behind it and recognize why one keyword or one product or one niche makes more sense than another product niche or category. So let's kind of break this down. Okay. So what I mean by the ideology behind the specific products that I want you to sell is that there, you're going to find products within, uh, within a larger niche, right? And these, these are right here, these two ones, and then this third one, maybe. And and kind of the pros with these kinds of products are that they're probably going to sell more than the ones that are at the bottom. Okay. And so from right off the bat, you might be doing your product research, you might be pulling up Jungle Scout, Helium 10, whatever, to look at some of the metrics behind a specific keyword and what the first page is doing. And then your eyes might light up the moment that you see something doing like 20 to 50,000 or 50,000 to $100,000 a month. And you're like, holy crap, imagine if I could make that month, there's no there's no way that they're doing this much and all this stuff. And, and suddenly your your eyes are um, like lit up and then you're, 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 you're curious about that niche. And I want you to avoid that um, problem, problem because most of the time the case is that these kinds of products that have more sales per month means that they have more competition. So if you look at the, like the product depth of how many competitors are selling that product, you're going to see like closer to a hundred, whereas opposed to these ones, you might see closer to like 20 or 30. And so, yes, this one sells more, but you're going to be dealing with more competitors and not only competitors, but competitors with more money. And at the end of the day, um, Amazon's um, algorithm is, is a zero sum game. In order for you to get on the first page, you have to knock down all the other people before you, right? So if there's 20, 30 spots on the first page, you want to make sure that you have your product has to be better than 20 or 30 other products. And so because it's a zero sum game, you're always competing with your competitors for the products that you're selling. It just makes sense that you're going after competitor or products and niches that are less competitive as opposed to products and niches where it's more competitive. And especially for those of you who are gonna, where this is going to be your first time selling on Amazon, you're probably not going to spend, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars on your first product. You're probably going to spend closer to like, you know, four to 10,000. And these are the kind of products where it's going to take you, you know, at least $5,000 in advertising costs to just do a launch and, and giveaways and PPC just to get on the first page, as opposed to these ones where it's only going to cost you $1,000. And so even though you might have selected the right product and you would have, it would have had potential just because you ran out of money, just because you weren't able to get the traction to get on the first page, all of a sudden, instead of a successful product, you have a dud product. And that's what we want to avoid. And that's why I'm a huge fan of just being a, a bottom feeder. Okay. We're just like, in, in, in the sea, you know, we're not, we're not the sharks. We're not the meadows. We're not like big fish. We're like, we're, we're like snails. Okay. We just want to grab the scraps, the leftovers. And that's the low hanging fruit where there's, you know, is it easier to compete with other snails than freaking sharks and meadows? Yes. Are you not going to get the, the, the filet mignon of the, the sharks and, and the, and the fish pieces? No, but you're going to succeed more often. And that's what I'd rather see than someone just go after something big, fail, lose a lot of money, and then and then be super disappointed right because you can always climb your way up from the lower stratus right so it's like you start your first product and you're like bam i did five thousand a month in sales i'm super happy now i'm ready to like do my next product and then you might be happy just doing that five more times and suddenly you're doing twenty five thousand dollars a month in revenue and and you're good to go or you might be like you know what i'm i feel comfortable with amazon i understand the process i get how everything's going why don't i ramp it up and try and go after something that's like in this category and the tier two where I know I'm going to have to spend three to $4,000 in advertising, but I know as long as I can do this, um, the opportunity is there. I'm going to get more reward for my risk, higher risk, higher reward. And so that's why I said, you know, what we're, that's what we're going to be doing. Now, 
I do have a list of um, random product ideas that I came up with as I was just kind of jotting down and just in front of my computer as well. And so we'll go over this and you'll see a lot of these aren't specifically like right here within a sub niche or like a, right here at a sub 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 niche. Some of them up here, some of them up here, some of them are even products that we can come up with other product ideas from. And so you'll see as we're doing our research, um, we'll figure out exactly right off the bat what has potential, what doesn't have potential and kind of go from there. But um, at the uh, the second part of the product research phase, what we're going to do is we're going to start eliminating from that list. So like, let's say I, I take this list, right? We're going to be doing a big um, product research phase for a part time. And then we start coming up with a list of, you know, 20, 30 items that are that have potential to sell, right? Because none of these isn't necessarily like it has actually has potential to sell. And out of those 20 and 30, what we're going to do is we're going to start really diving into it in, in part two of the video. And we're going to start eliminating the ones that aren't a good idea. And so we might be like, oh, uh, uh, this one's not a good idea. And then this one's not a good idea. And this one's not a good idea. And we just keep going along. And all of a sudden, we found a product that fits all our criteria and really is the one. And then this one right here will be the winner. And that's really the one that we want to go after. And so this is a time consuming process. You'll see even when I'm doing this, it takes time. Um, and if you're a newbie, like if you're here, like spending an hour of your time once a week, or maybe you got excited the first day or the second day and you bought a course, whatever, and, and you did the research and you did it for two hours that first night. And then you kind of like stop doing that. And then you can't find products and things like that. It's because you just haven't spent enough time. And you're going to see that in, in when I'm going about doing this, I have experience with this, but it still takes a lot of time. You'd be surprised if it takes you even a week or even longer to find a product and that's okay. That's okay because product is becoming more and more important for you uh, and choosing the right product is becoming more and more important on Amazon every single year for you to succeed. Uh, yes, you can advertise the crap out of a, a okay product and eventually get it to succeed. But I mean, like that's not as that's going to be that's going to work against you just like how you might choose like a higher uh, less higher selling item then if you were to just find a better find spend more time to find a better product than just going after one that just might have the potential for it right and so um like like for example like one that has a good that has bad product but great marketing is something like um like the shake weight okay not a great product great marketing Right. A lot of it was just a catchy product. A lot of people thought it was funny. It was kind of a gag gift sometimes, a lot of times. And so then people bought it and uh, it's not the greatest product, but it took a lot of marketing to get there and actually get in front of people's eyes. And so, like I said, you're better off just having a product that people really like and will actually go out of their way to talk to their friends and family about rather than um, just a product that's OK and then just dumping advertising into it. OK. All right. So before we get started, um, you're probably going to want some coffee or agua and then a nice few hours of undisturbed focused time and uh and some hype music if you want to get that going so let's get that going and let's actually get started okay actually i already typed aquarium into this and so, by the way, again, Helium 10 is one of those uh, tools that I basically require as a mandatory product that you need because it has so many tools within it and it's just a great bang for your uh, buck and it shows you your search volume, all that kind of stuff. And you're going to see why it's so valuable and that's why I use it here in my example. I wouldn't recommend any software or product that I don't personally use or like. So highly recommend that you look into this. So what I did right here off, off the bat, what I'd like to do is just type in that keyword idea, product, niche, whatever, into... Uh, Helium 10's magnet keyword research tool because the keyword research tool, what it does is it actually pulls up similar groups of keywords that might not even specifically be uh, related to the term aquarium. So uh, a lot of keyword search um, tools, what they do is like you might when you search up aquarium, it might be like things like aquarium uh, fish or aquarium box, aquarium tool, that kind of thing. But what uh, Helium 10 does with its data points is it actually groups up similar keywords that people type in to that phrase that might not have anything to do with that specific phrase. So very cool. I'm a big fan of it. So water, video, fish tank, dome, fish tank. Um, let's let's see if we can find something a little bit more niche. So aquarium heater. I have no idea what an aquarium heater is, and probably a lot of you guys don't either. And so. What we'll do
take a look. And then from here, I just kind of like look at it and see what the heck it's about. So it looks like it's like some kind of... It's got a thermostat on there and basically it's just a rod that heats up. Okay, makes sense. Let's take a look at Jungle Scout. Jungle Scout extension is what I use. You can still use Helium 10. It, they, they have similar accuracy. Um, but I'm just, I'm just familiar with Jungle Scout. I got it even before Helium 10 was a thing a long time ago. And so, um, I'm just used to it. You don't have to get Jungle Scout if you don't need to, because Helium 10 has not one of its own as its extension, but you can. So what I'm looking at is right off the bat, what kind of reviews, average number of reviews am I seeing? I'm not a big fan of seeing ones that a lot of things that have more than like a hundred reviews per month. I like the sales on this product. Um, 69 reviews, 16 sales a day, 11,000. It's got a 3.5 out of 5. This is actually not bad. Uh, it is electronic, so you're going to have to look out for that. Four thousand fifteen reviews. The problem that I see with this product is being able to actually uh, differentiate, right? So I, I'm seeing the demand. I'm seeing that it's not terrible competition. I'm not seeing like a ton of like past 600, 700 reviews, but it's hard to kind of um, differentiate with this. Like, how are you going to make this product better than others? And yes, you could probably kind of dive really deep into it and be able to kind of figure out like ways you can bundle items and that kind of thing. But I think we'll just kind of skip on this one and see if there's anything else that we can find. Aquarium decorations, interesting. Are people, I mean, people are actually typing in aquarium decorations, but I wonder if people are typing like, like aquarium volcano, that kind of thing. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad. It's very easy to differentiate, right? Because it's just a matter of design for something like this. Right off the bat, potential ideas is just straight bundling a bunch of stuff together. Because I don't see a lot of people doing that. And right off the bat, like, why wouldn't you want a bunch of stuff bundled together? And then people can see what it looks like. And so, yes, you're going to be selling a higher priced item. But it's going to be like a bunch of various items. So like you've got, these ones are kind of not too good, but pen plaques, mythical magic castles aquarium ornament. It's kind of badass. I like it. Um, like stone rep. This is something you can absolutely replicate. We've got one image and one video. So there's definitely room for someone to get better images than them. Yeah, you're seeing like people are buying other stuff with, what is this thing? What is this thing? Moss balls. Oh, it's a pickup. Curbs algae growth, which absolutely makes sense. You know what I'm thinking? Like I'm, I'm just racking my brain right off the bat and I'm thinking, okay, what if this somehow had some aquarium, um, uh, algae growth mitigation somewhere in there? Like wouldn't that be like a super product differentiator where it's like in your title it says helps curb, uh, aquarium decorations helps curb, um, algae growth. It's like, whoa, that's like two in one right? Boom, right off the bat, you got a product variation. Now, I don't know how feasible that is. I don't know, you know, what that entails. But I mean, if anything else, you could just say that you could be like, like a bundle pack, 
like stone replicas for fish to hang out and also to help curb algae growth and you just bundle these two things together let's see what else people are looking to this volcano is freaking badass it's against terms of service to not just have uh, a product behind a white background but so many people get away with it like i don't even know anymore like terms of service is almost like okay don't say i said it but it's almost like it's meant to be broken because so many people do it like all the insert product slips and people asking for reviews where it's technically terms of service but they still do it anyway and have been doing it forever it's like yeah this one is not and like i guarantee this product this image probably has been here for the life of this product so i even see, i can't even see sales on this thing but like what the heck okay so the reason why okay the reason why even when i'm looking at this this these two caught my attention is because it just catches your attention when you're looking at all this it's like boom what is going on with this thing like that is awesome so something to consider you're gonna have to think about that even as you're doing your product research and figuring out how to uh, differentiate it. So if you have like let's say one degree of differentiation, that's going to be as powerful as three different uh, three grades of differentiation, or maybe uh, one point of differentiation, or as opposed to like two points of differentiation, right? And so like what you could do is you could change the color, and that's one degree, one point of differentiation. But if you were to maybe like bundle it with another item and change the color, now you have two points of uh, differentiation and two points of um, uh, level of the product differentiation. And so now it's like even more different. So that's what you can do where you can just combine it. You don't really have to um, revolutionize the wheel. And I actually really don't recommend doing that. But instead of maybe just combining one bundle item, just combine ideas together, bundle it and like change the colors or um, or I don't know, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along. What is going on with this? And this is awesome. Does it float? Just fix suction cup. It attaches floating freely. Oh, it attaches to the bottom and just floats. <laughs> I love it. I bet fish would kind of have fun with it too, unless like they eat into it or something. Too bad they only get 3.4 out of 5 though. Must be something wrong with it, but you know what? Let's move on. This has potential aquarium decorations. Let's jot that down. Aquarium decorations bundle algae growth mitigation balls. Other accessories together. Now, some of the concerns that you might have is like, oh, suddenly if I bundle this together, is that what people are looking for, right? Maybe people are actually uh, looking to buy things individually. And in most cases, people are fine with it bundled. And I will show you one way you can figure out more whether people would actually buy it if it was all bundled together or not, okay? And that would probably be in part two. Well, we're still in our first word. Let's keep going. Hydroponics growing system. Aquarium filter. This one's probably going to be one of those. We'll just still take a look. You also have to know that this kind of thing is going to work. I don't know Jack ish about aquarium filters. I've never owned an aquarium. So this is one of those niches that might be a little bit more challenging for me. But you know, you, you just use common sense. But if you're someone that knows aquariums or have owned an aquarium, that might be an interesting niche for you. So I smell opportunity in aquariums or somewhere in like water pet niche. I can smell it. Um, and so if you're familiar with this niche, this might be a great place for you to like, as a pet owner, as an aquarium owner, you're like, you know what? I freaking hate that I have to clean out my tank every week. I wonder if like I could come up with something that would, that would help people with that, right? Aquarium filter, not a fan. 
hydroponics growing system. Nah. Nah. So the reason why I'm saying nah right off the bat is because unless you're like this actually has potential within like the hydroponics growing system like maybe you're selling like buckets like these buckets right here for hydroponic growth stuff but most of these are too expensive and then if you're going to source it it's like a bunch of items together like i'm sure it makes money but like you know if you could sell something like these that could be good but Potential idea. Sleep sounds, meditation music. A lot of people are searching meditation music. It always makes me wonder kind of like, like I know Helium 10 does a great job of being able to understand like, hey, this this keyword probably gets a, like, you know, searched twice as much as something like this. But I wonder how many people are actually typing in meditation music to Amazon as opposed to something like Google. Aquarium plants. Okay, so yeah, that's what I was talking about and looking into. Decoration plants. Beta fish tank. We've all been there. We've all been through that tragedy. You know, I, right off the bat, what I'm saying is like, there's a lot of fancy stuff on here, right? You know what I'm kind of looking for is I just want some, like a basic bro beta fish tank. Like I, I'm spending like five, $10 on this fish. Like, am I likely to spend $70 on a tank, $60 in a tank? Probably not. I want like a basic bro tank. And maybe it's like, like it's a little bit nicer than the ones that you get at like the pet store. What I'm saying right off the bat, though, is a uh, room for opportunity is that a lot of these have some uh, kind of crappy uh, review ratings. A lot of threes, a lot of three and a halves, fours, which smells like opportunity. But it does have a lot of reviews, a lot of products. It does sell well, though. Fifty-seven ninety-nine. I mean, it looks nice. You know, like, to be honest, I'm actually not a fan of the main images with, like, the box box picture. Like, I know normally it kind of validates the brand, but I'm it's almost more catchier to, like, see something like this or, like, like this, where I can, like, imagine and emotionally attach myself with the actual, like, my fish being in it, and the plant, and stuff. You know, one thing that I want to see right off the bat after LED on a fish tank is, like, some kind of, like, built-in thermometer, because, like, dude, I'm not going to lie, I, that's, I kind of struggle with that with my beta fishes, okay? I guess I technically have owned a fish or an aquarium, not an aquarium, but, like, a fish tank, um, but temperature, and I know a lot of other people um, have problems with that too. So, like, it would be cool if like the uh, aquarium or the fish tank included a, a temperature monitor, so that you make sure it's like in the optimal temperature for it, um, or just like a like a separate. You just bundle it together, right, with a, a thermometer, and maybe like one like a fish tank that also comes with like these rocks uh, starter kit like why is this so bad the image is on point though that's why it sells well right it's got three and a half out three stars out of five but the image is on point image is on point and the title led starter kit boom let me know everything that i want to see terrible tank for two betas oh okay this is a terrible tank for beta fish 
The middle border doesn't properly separate them, and I found both my betas on the same side once. The filter is a terrible thing for betas. Okay, so it's just not a... It just doesn't do a good job. I smell opportunity. Um, I smell opportunity. Like I said, as you're looking at this and you're starting to look more in-depth into these product ideas and, and that kind of thing, you have to imagine like, okay, my product is going to be right here. Okay, or right here. When people look at it, are people going to be inclined to click on this? Are people going to be inclined to look at my product over this one? You have to know that your product is going to be better than the other one. If not, then you're, you're not going to be able to succeed with your product. Bottom line, you're just not. And so that's the kind of mindset, like that's kind of like my be all end all. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to imagine my product right here. Can I imagine it selling better than these ones? Yes. Good. And let's go. No, then then fortunately it's going to be a no-go. I'll write down. Cream gravel. So you include that gravel in your starter kit. Air pump, fish... Total freaking tank. I bet a lot of people have turtles out there. That looks like a food plate, if anything. Jeez. Wow, this isn't bad actually at all. Turtle tanks. Like, these reviews are not a lot. And the demand isn't that bad. Like, this thing, like, it's not even a, like a turtle tank in a sense. People are just, they can't find what they're looking for. And so they're just choosing the next best thing, which is an aquarium. And yes, obviously, of course, you can use an aquarium for your turtle tank, but it's not specified for a turtle tank. If if there was two similar products that are similarly pr priced, and one said specifically turtle tank as opposed to an aquarium, which one do you think would be more likely to sell for the keyword turtle tank? Obviously, for sure, to the turtle tank. And then maybe you might include something uh, with that turtle tank to differentiate it. And so, yes, you're selling it for more than 24 because, I mean, a 10 gallon empty aquarium for selling for 24, like, ooh, they must be getting it for really cheap especially considering the size, dimensions, they're not, not making a lot of margin on this. So you're better off with something like this, selling a a, a, uh, a higher higher quality product for more expensive and bundling it with a couple of items. But this has potential. Like this is $162. Like, I feel like not as many people are willing to spend $162 on a turtle tank. $34.99. Yeah, like, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of, like, the box images. Like, it it kind of does. Yes, it gives, like, a brand, like, it makes it more official. But I would rather just actually see, like, a live turtle and, like, be able to imagine it. Like, this one's cool. Like, my brain's, like running, like coming up with all kinds of different ideas how you could differentiate your product with uh, something like a turtle tank. So I'll add this to the list and we'll just keep on moving on. And 9,000 exact search volume, like, I actually just search volume. Okay, they got rid of the exact search volume care, but 9,000 is, it's enough. It's enough for sure. Aquarium lights. Like I'm coming up with all ideas like you could just bundle like aquarium lights. You just combine that with LEDs and stuff. Actually, I think so, a lot of people are doing that as well. But let's move on to um, my next word. Bamboo.
there's a niche for people uh like that are like just anything that's bamboo made you know what i mean like i've seen bamboo sunglasses that were really cool I, like i personally wanted it so bamboo toothbrush i know that's you can't even differentiate with something like that Men's box briefs that's random Bamboo sheets. What the heck is a bamboo sheet? Oh, okay. Wind chimes, boxer briefs. Bamboo. Plant. These are live. I wonder how they do that. Pretty good sales. Competition three three one 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 sixty eight. I'm just thinking, like, how do you differentiate yourself from this? Like, include a bunch of bamboos, like, meh. different color now, size now. Comes with the vase. That's a better idea, but. Like, how do you maintain that? Pass. Bamboo. Char organizer. Okay. It's pretty competitive. like does bamboo ever color come in like a different color than like woodish like i wonder if like a supplier could paint the bamboo into like a like a nice maroon color like a dark dark like a like a like a reddish brown and then it's you know it, it gives it like more of like a like a fancy kind of thing that could be like a product differentiator um Yeah, really competitive. Really, really, really competitive. Has potential, but too competitive, especially for your first product. Unless you can just come up with a really good way to differentiate it. And even then, it's still competitive, because you still have to get on the first page. Pass! But you know what you could do? is You could copy this. Enter it into Helium 10. Comes up with all kinds of different products. All right. Drawer organizer, bathroom organizer. I feel like organizers are like super competitive in general and, and super overdone, very saturated. Spice rack organizer. That catches my attention. It's not even prime. I wonder if they ran out of stock. Can you spin it? Is it spinnable? Susan turntip. So yeah, you can spin it. Hmm. 
9, 14, 5, 13. Yeah, super competitive. I wouldn't recommend looking going into this. Like dang. Like I mentioned over and over again, you have to consider just how many average daily sales you have to do. What? Jungle Scout, you failing me! And my email is failing me. My computer's failing me. Let's try moving on to another one, and then if there's another issue, then. I'm gonna move on just because I'm not I'm not feeling it. I ain't feeling it. So much fun. And this is why it's kind of why it's cool to do product research like this rather than rather than using like filters and then like finding products within a specific um, like filter range because one you don't you never know what you're gonna find you just get more diverse ideas and you can sort through all the ones that you don't want to look through and it's just it's just better okay just it's just better just do it do what I say <laughs> I know a bunch of people that love their rose gold stuff rose gold is their thing toiletry bag what is a toiletry so I just, it was just a thought that I had in my head. I had no idea that Helium 10 was going to pull up toiletry bag out of the word gold. Uh, rose gold, so. Oh, of course I know that. Mom's best friend. I have a mom, like, really, like a functional, functional lady, functional woman. Um, too competitive. Electronics organizer, lithium stethoscope. Litman stethoscope. I just want to know what this is. It's going to be too competitive. Is it just a stethoscope? Oh, okay. Oh, it's a brand. Dang. Medical supplies, guys. Medical supplies. Nail polish, leather, cosmetic bag. Rose gold pop socket, brands, 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 makeup bag, bracelet, running. Now you might be like, oh, why is he skipping a few some of these things? It's because I've I've looked into some of these niches before, and um, I just know what they're about. Wine tumbler. This can be saturated. Rose gold. This is best selling because it's rose gold. Four thousand three hundred six hundred. Nah. It's one of those things where it's like probably like here, maybe here. Not niche enough.
Foot tubs. Bet you'd have never thought this. I have one. Very useful for washing your feet. Gotta keep your feet clean. Massager, massager, Epsom salt. Medinsol, Mindensol. Mindensol for feet. No idea. Foot bath. Foot tubs? And it's onus, it's just like a product anyway. Thousand, thousand, six hundred, eight hundred. Cheap. Like. I almost want to say like foot bath massagers is one of those like evergreen markets that people are always going to like buy. People love their foot baths, tubs. Well, I wouldn't recommend this for your first product. There can be a lot of things that go wrong with it. It deals with electronics and water. And um, can be expensive. Ah, oh, see, they included pumice stone. Okay. That's the sole reason they're doing better than everyone else. Okay. <laughs> it's because they included the pumice stone. It's genius. 509, that's on the first page. Okay, you know what? I'm wasting time here. This, this is probably not something I personally would do, so I'll, I'll, I'll move, move on. I'm not even going to do sheets. Or who knows? Maybe it's like has an amazing... Amazing niche, and I'm just not looking into it. You might find something amazing, so you never know. Really, the the purpose of this video isn't to like watch what I find and then and then use what I find, because I'm sure more than a few people are gonna hopefully watch this video. So um, I would recommend just kind of start understanding what I'm looking for, and as I'm talking to myself understand, trying to understand my mindset behind why I might be interested in a niche or a product idea and why I wouldn't be, right? That way I'm teaching you how to fish. I'm teaching you how to do this yourself so you can find the um, product ideas yourself, okay? So as you're looking at, thinking about this, you might be watching this recording and being like, oh, you know what? He, Jack just missed this product or, oh, you know what? Something like this idea could be, have potential. I saw it in like in the related product section. And then that's the kind of things that you run with and, and see if there's anything like that. Candle making supplies. It's kind of cool. Like I'd love to know how to make candles. This is nine reviews. It's forty six ninety five. That's a that's a good price. Depends on demand. Yeah, it's it's got four thousand sales per month. Thirty five hundred, but like that product offer is pretty on point. It's a lot of stuff in there. And this is just like a more established version of it. So this is one of those things that has potential. Um, yeah, but reviews, like there is a lot of reviews for some of these. Yeah, it's, it's competitive. I probably wouldn't look into it, but I mean, you also have to consider like, how are you gonna differentiate? Because some of these guys seem to like, this guy like seems to have like locked it down. That's a lot of crap for 49 bucks. Now you're gonna have to beat that guy. So. Candle making supplies. 
the baby niche, okay? What can we think of that babies need? No, I don't want to do baby niche right now. Like, I can spend more time searching up other keywords that I know is probably going to offer me better stuff than going through baby niche right now. And, I, and right now I'm recording a video, right? So it's not like I'm doing this at the luxury of my, my pad and I'm just like, just, you know, just doing this all day just for fun or, or to obviously find a product. And so I just want to try and, and do the things that are probably going to provide as much insight as possible. So. Now I'm a big fan of like something like rock climbing because it's like a niche within a niche within a niche. And within that niche, I know there's a, I personally know, like I'm from Colorado, so maybe I'm biased, but I know a ton of friends that are just super into rock climbing. Like that's their thing. And rock climbing is one of those things that you can't just like free fall and do. Like people need their equipment and people like to buy their stuff because it's a big, big hobby of theirs. So I know that there's a lot of attention and there's a lot of people that are interested in something like this. So that's my background behind this. It's a vertical climber. Uh, this might be too cheap. You know, if it was like a chalk bag that was like a two and or a three in one. You know what? For now, I'm going to just write down rock climbing. And in part two of my video, I'm going to show you like how you can come up with product ideas for something like this, okay? Um, martial arts. If I type into Helium 10, it might come up with some interesting ideas. But like right off the bat, I'm thinking like, I don't know, jujitsu, um, boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, all of them with huge followings and huge uh, people that are super into it. So. And within those niches have like a bunch of things that are needed for it. Bruce Lee, Jiu Jitsu, be water, my friend. Um, pocket staff, portable martial arts. What the frick? I, I, I gotta know what this is. I can't not know what a pocket staff portable martial arts is. It's a pocket staff. That's freaking awesome. Like someone that's like super into like martial arts movies and that kind of thing. It's like a, like a, it's almost, it's like a gag gift, but can also be kind of taken seriously. I assume it's like one of those things that it's like retractable. Am I thinking this right? It's, it's like a retractable, but you know what? It's probably not a lot of demand for this. <laughs> it's a cool product, but not enough demand, unfortunately. All right, so then let's take in Jitsu and actually like see if we can find something. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the same thing that I said with and then Be able to come up with some ideas. You have waterproof backpacks. No, most of these are like water resistant. 
But when I think waterproof backpack, in my mind, right off the bat, what I was thinking is like, I could straight submerge that thing underwater and it'd be fine. You know what I mean? And so like, yes, this has an attachment to make sure that the water can't get out, but I, I freaking want to see something that's straight, straight mouth getting water, waterproof. Oh, this one right here. Thirty-seven ninety-nine. That's like pretty cheap. I would imagine backpacks, especially waterproof ones, would be more expensive. But like that's potentially an idea, like where it's just straight hundred percent waterproof. It might, it might not have the best, cleanest design because you don't have like a hundred thousand dollars to for product development. But I'm think it might have potential for like, uh, like like an actual submersible waterproof backpack. Like, I want to know that my GoPro is going to be okay, my phone's going to be okay, my freaking, my my cookies in there and the foil wrap's going to be okay. If I accidentally am running through the rainforest and I dip into a puddle, or maybe I'm like traveling and it rains a ton, I just want to know that there's no chance, or like, a, maybe I have like really expensive camera equipment. I want to know and make sure that there's zero chance of any water getting through that, no matter how much it gets soaked. Like this thing has 26 reviews. It's it's $37, $38 for sale. Dry bag, waterproof backpack, floating 20L. It's like floating. Okay, so like, yeah, this thing, this thing hits the points, right? It's waterproof, it floats, and uh, it's actually a pretty decent design. It only has 26 reviews and it already has 16,000. So you can see how there is demand for this because it only has 26 reviews. It's starting doing 16,000. It's on the first page. Um, people are looking for this. Cool. Now, would I recommend you look into it? Maybe. It's just kind of a cool product too. Like I, that's something that I would be kind of semi-passionate about where like compared to like a freaking desk organizer or like utilities organizer where I just like, yeah, I mean, it's a cool product and you know, it sells well, but like, it's okay. It's okay. Nothing, nothing crazy. Men's compression pants. No way. Wooden toys. Why are people searching up just wooden toys? What wooden toys are people selling? Like a, like a horse, one of those things that like rock back and forth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never had kids. At least I think. All right. Uh, phone stand. Blah, 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 blah. I know that there's like phone stand stuff like out there, like selfie sticks and stuff. Um, I was hoping to come up with a like a potential like cross product or something around that niche. Rah. So yeah, like these, like the wireless chargers, like phone stands are big, big, big. Phone accessories in general actually is pretty saturated market. Unless it's like very niche, niche down. Yeah, let's just move on. Sunshades. Sure sounds like sunglasses to me, Jack. I don't know. I don't know. Different keyword. Who knows what it's going to pull up. It's getting dark in here. Car window shade. Mm. 
very, very competitive. You want to niche down within this. Shade sale. What is a shade sale? What the heck is this thing? That's kind of cool. It's not patented, boys and girls. Probably. This is something I'd probably check for a patent. But, like, there's so many different brands that are selling it, so you should be fine. It's just like a big fat tarp that just goes across and blocks the sun. 200, rev 200 reviews, 100 reviews, 100 reviews. I kind of like it. It's not bad. Sell price is good because you're not seeing anything like really much besides this one below 30 and 26. Reviews are like multiple hundreds. Um, the biggest challenge for something like this is finding a good supplier with a quality product, right? So you're going to have to do more research in your uh, supplier research phase and your sample order phase. The other is that um, something like this unit price is going to be probably around like at least like seven, eight, nine, ten dollars so. You might run into like issues with, with like your first order if you don't have as much initial capital. Um, some of the other things is being able to actually differentiate this, right? So you're seeing a bunch of Me Too products in, in all of this, right? So like how, how would you go about differentiating this? There's hooks that people are buying. And by the way, these numbers right now are going to jump up in the summer and spring seasons. But right now, like it's like February. And so these numbers are probably a lot less than what it is in the summers. Now, I'm not a big fan of like super, super seasonal products. But I'm okay with like semi-seasonal products. Like like a super seasonal product would be like, like a freaking snow shovel. Right? That's like super seasonal. Completely dies down in the off seasons. But some things like this probably does get sold year 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 round. Obviously, it's going to dip compared to summers, but it's still feasible. Shade, shade, sail webbing. What am I looking at? Hooks, clasps, and and wire. Put it on the list because I'm, I don't know. We'll put it on the list. It's probably not going to make it, but we'll just add it on the list. Sunshade for card windows. Like, boom, there's like a lot of different ways that people are typing in sunshades for windows. But then you saw like a ton of people with like multiple thousands of views. So like, just like me and like a bunch of everyone else, people love to make sure that their cars are okay. And so a lot of like, like I'm more of a fan of like something like the car accessories niche over like baby accessories niche. Yeah. Carport. What do you need for the carport? Just type in carport. Oh, that's a carport. Okay. Expensive, expensive. Would not recommend for your first product. Your initial order, like let's say each one of these costs you like 50 bucks to source. Let's say you order 500 units, like $25,000 in your first trial order. And that's not even without advertising or anything like that. So that's why you might be like, whoa, big money. Now, you know what's actually kind of interesting though? These kinds of like higher price products have way less competition. And every time you get a sale, each sale is valued a lot higher. So even if you don't get a lot of daily sales, like this thing gets less than five sales a day and does 36,000 a month. 
beauty of selling higher priced products, but that initial order, just not something I recommend for your first product. If you have experience with it and you're more of like an intermediate advanced seller, then you can absolutely look into something like this. Um, but if, if you're like, but the thing with a lot of like, like intermediate and advanced sellers is that a lot of times what, what you're going to notice is that you're going to start niching down to like the, the sales category that you're involved in because it's just easier and just makes more sense from a brand perspective and you're just more familiar with it for you to stay in that category as opposed to like jump up to something completely random, right? And so that's why um, even then, that's why this is even a bigger barrier to entry because new sellers probably aren't going to dive into something like this. And it's really like the sellers or brick brands that already like are established in like local stores might hop onto this. But then, um, but then yeah, like less competition, but higher, higher barriers of entry, which isn't necessarily bad. But like I said, you're going to run into that startup cost. Moving on. Garden care, okay? People love their gardens. That's all I have to say about that. People love their gardens. soil what I need that gardening is actually another uh, niche that has a lot of potential This is like one of those things though, it's like you gotta really niche down within that niche down. I will show you like I said the other ones. How you can come up with product ideas rather than like doing them this way and then using Helium 10. Because Helium 10 is like a cool way to come up with ideas but it's not like the end all be all. Nor is it potentially even the best way. Soil test kit. This is probably part of a launch. It's got a huge spike in sales and we're able to bring that their bar, our BSR down and um, get on the first page. Or it's a fluke. Amazon's algorithm, it's, it's a fluke. Or their reviews got removed. Like this thing like has a three out of five. It's got 479 reviews, but Still does 8,000 a month in sales. It's soil analyzer, it's digital soil analyzer. That's actually kind of cool. Or what is its BSR? How is it? It's number one new release. Okay, so you know it's getting a lot of sales right now. It's been on three days, so you don't even have Keepa's BSR score on there. Oh, uh, if I forgot to mention, yeah, keep a uh, Chrome extension. Get it. <laughs> this is number two. 1508 in patio. So yeah, obviously it's a launch like three days. Got the new release. Paid advertising. The three ones, so, but the thing is like all of these are so similar. Like this one's the same, 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 all same. 
right? So immediately in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, how would I differentiate this? And if I can't, then I bet I could find something like this on Alibaba right now. But that doesn't help me. That doesn't help you. Uh, that doesn't help the buyer because it's all the same thing. And you can't differentiate yourself that way. Never differentiate on price. Never differentiate just on color. Right? Um, and and images. It should be more valuable. And ideally, it's like a no-brainer that it's more valuable. That's like the real big winners. All right, what do we have next? We've got grow plants and vegetables. Kind of talked about that already. Crystals. Give me my crystals. Hold on, guys. I'm going to um, get some lights up in here. Himalayan salt lamps are huge, huge back in the day. Probably still huge. Sage smudge stick. I've already seen it. But I bet you guys might be curious. It's a cool product. Uh, for the people that are super in, uh, into that kind of thing, it's like you burn in this age and then it's like stuff, but um, it's very competitive and like it's gonna be hard to compete with like these kinds of these listings. I'm always thinking like how would I be able to beat them? If I can't then eh. Zen Garden. Ah, oh, how cool. I didn't know this was a thing. That's cool. That's like taking these things and doing a product variation. That's, that's just textbook 101. That's just variation 101 right there by the book. This isn't bad. Sorry, I was like silent for, for a minute. Um, not a lot of reviews right off the bat, right? Something that you're definitely gonna be able to source. What the heck is this thing? I wanna know how many cells this does. Himalayan grow. Twenty six hundred, twenty three reviews. Maybe it's the price tag and the image could be better, honestly. It displays what it does, but it could be better. I would honestly really consider how to go about like differentiating this or bundling it together, but what the heck is this thing? It does 45,000, 82 cells a day with a three out of five stars. I mean, yes, given it does have over a thousand reviews, What the frick? This thing does 40,000? What is this thing? Mini Buddha board? That's it! It's, it's, a, it's a Buddha... It's a mini Buddha board. Like, what else do you need to know? That's... Oh... 
This is probably something that's pretty branded. Like, almost like patented. Is this patented? What the heck? Are other people selling something like this? The original Buddha board. Okay, so it's like a... Yeah, okay, it's a thing. It's, it's a freaking thing. Twenty one new. Okay. My bad, guys. Let's just move on, but it's a cool product. Tell you this isn't branded. Tabletop fountains. Interesting. I mean, this is Amazon's bestsellers. This is going to be big numbers. This isn't even a keyword. Okay. Well, I lied. I mean, this is one of those things that you can, it's easy to differentiate, right? It's just the design. Like this one right off the bat stands out from the other ones because it's a freaking uh, Buddha. So you can see how like it really differentiated itself. Like what if you have something like a freaking dragon or like a badass like turtoise or turtle? I'm spouting that thing. That's a differentiator. I would avoid lights on it. I would make sure that the sound, that trickling sound is there. There's a lot of these, like 3, 3.5, 4. So like, even though it has a lot of reviews, okay, one thing that offsets the number of reviews that it has is that the rating is very low, okay? And that's going to help you a lot. So keep that in mind. So there are exceptions to the rule where, where there's like a lot of reviews, um, where like if the review rating is bad, then you still have potential to be able to uh, claim, claim a spot here and beat them. This, this sounds to me like if you if across the board there's a ton of like low low ratings um, yes it's a it means that there's opportunity obviously but it also means you're gonna run into some serious challenges making sure that the uh, qual uh, pro product the product is quality so in your when you're after you order your, your samples and your testing phase, you're going to really want to make sure that your samples are good. And in, in a case like this, if I were to pull the trigger or something like this and I found a good design, I would want, I would really, really deep dive deep. And actually, you know what? I'll add this to the list because um, it's going to be a good case study for me to show you um, how to dive deep into a niche and, and kind of really see what's going on. Because I bet a lot of these are saying the same thing. Maybe like uh, the lights don't work. Or maybe the water overfills or water dries up too fast or maybe it doesn't make the trickling sound like lights don't work M like like i don't know whatever the reason is and that's like going to be fundamental across all water fountain um tabletop water fountains and so what you want to do is you want to make sure that uh that's the one thing that you can fix because then when people are going on here people are savvy okay they're not stupid People are going to look at these and be like, oh, I mean, even this still has like a three out of five. Why are people saying bad things? And then they're going to realize what the reason is. People are going to be like, oh, you know what? The lights don't work. Oh, you know, it stopped working after a few days. And then like if you can address that in your listing and say we we're able to figure it out and say that in the title and your images are on point, like that's huge. That's that's huge in improving conversion rates and getting sales. So I'll add this on the list and we'll keep going on and all that from crystals. All that from crystals. It's crazy. No, Zen Garden. And Zen Garden came from crystals. So, phew, how many niches did we skip to get to here? Back massager. I know this is a super saturated market. I wanted to type it into Helium 10 to see what it comes up with. Uh, 
<sighs> massage chair. I'm going to just straight up skip most of these because we want a niche down. We want something that's like f for like cellulite massager. Like that's niche within a niche. You know what I mean? Like a cellulite. Oh, you know what? Actually, I forgot Zen Garden was actually pretty decent too. Um, cellulite, cellulite massager. What is, how is the technology even behind that? Like, how would that, interesting. What I like about this is that there's a lot of different product offerings. So what that means is that there's room for a lot of product differentiation. So you don't see a lot of me too products, which is, which is actually generally good because if it, there's a lot of me too products, it means that there's not a, like a lot of other things that sell well decently or is easy to source. And that's why you see a lot of bunch of me too products, but like, holy crap, this thing does 130,000. Oh, it's a uh, massage oil with essential oils and stuff. Ten dollars. It's a Scala cellulite massager. I know it's ten dollars, but I bet these guys are sourcing this thing for like a dollar. Money to be made for there for sure. I'm really tempted to do like a a, a case study where I sell like a cheaper product, and still be able to make money because nobody says that you can make money when it's cheaper than like twenty dollars, and that's just not the case. Anti-cellulite cup with cellulite massager. The problem is the reviews and the, and the rating is good. I would want to know like something within a niche within this niche. If you want to dive into this niche, it would be like a, a niche within this niche. Like, I don't know. You're going to have to think and just be kind of clever with it. You know what? I can't say that. This is why I'm making this video for you, right? So you kind of understand what you would do in a situation where you have to be more clever. So what I would do is I would just go into magnet tool and just actually type in cellulite massager and see what kind of other groups of keywords might come up with. And then we might be able to find a, another idea or a similar idea or something that's a little bit less competitive and still has potential. Cupping therapy sets. Cupping therapy sets. Oh, you know, I've seen this. I've never had this done to me. But it strangely looks like it would, like, work really well. So this is for acupuncture. Not a lot of reviews. Mm. Like I'm surprised there's so much demand. Like sometimes you're surprised by like how much demand some products have and how little some other products have. Because this cupping therapy set is specifically for acupuncture, right? Is there any other time you're going to be using this thing? Right? Or I don't know. But there's still like... This thing's got 29 reviews and does 30,000 a month, so it does 40 sales a day. I'm pretty sure these guys just copied this guy. Or vi vice versa. Or maybe they copied... I don't know.
I mean, it has potential because of the sheer demand for it. Okay, there's there is demand for this product, and there's depth to the demand. So what I mean by that is that um, it's not like just a few people have like seventy thousand sales, and then everyone else is just like a thousand, three thousand sales, or four thousand. There's multiple people, some with ten thousand, some with ninety two thousand, twenty five thousand, thirty six, twenty six thousand. Which means that there is no clear brand winner for this. So people in this market, in this niche, are not um, not affected as affected by like bigger brands and so they're okay with like more quality products based on what they think that they're going to get which is actually room means that there's room for improvement i also like that there's not a lot of reviews for this the biggest challenge is um again that product differentiation i'm always i'm always about that because there's no way and i'm sure i can find something similar to something like this on amazon okay But there's no way I'm going to be able to compete with this person when it's the exact same Me Too product. And you know what? Actually, I might be able to with just marketing and just knowing FBA and advertising and that kind of thing. But like, like your your business is not going to last long term if you're all you're doing is just selling Me Too products. And and that's just not a good idea in terms of long term. You don't want to think about this in uh, short term. You want to think about this in long term. Um, the other thing though I do like about something like this is that it's very industry specific so when you're running ads and targeted ads it's very easy to do targeting and do promotions and that kind of thing we'll add this on here for reference it's okay Where are we at? What am I even searching? How did I get there? From back massager? Okay. Oh, when I was thinking of this phrase, I really meant like, you know how they say like there's UV rays and stuff from computer screens and like your phones, like radiation thing? Thought there was like like then like there's a niche for it. I know there's glasses with tint for it. I was wondering if maybe there was like other stuff. Like the sun, they say that the sun has UV rays, right? And so then maybe like like a screen for the sun in your car. So yeah, the, those are the glasses that I was talking about, and it's a saturated market. Plus, like glasses, like. Hmm. It's like getting into watches or shoes. Um, LCD TV, computer glasses, women. Hmm. People are just straight up searching leopard print. What kind of leopard? Like, what leopard print? Uh, okay. Headache relief. One angle that I would think right off the bat for something like this would not necessarily be like pills because then you're competing with like like Tylenol and ibuprofen and that kind of thing for headaches. But like things like this, like a like a hat for migraines maybe. So it's like dark, like, or shades that completely, like from the top and bottom eliminate light. Would be an interesting product. The other thing is, um, for this kind of niche, you know what's, uh, what's kind of coming up are things like this is like the essential oils and like uh like homeotherapy is that what they call it but like it's like the essential oils and things like that there's a big big uh movement for that kind of thing where people use essential oils and that kind of thing and, uh, and like natural like incense and that kind of thing to soothe your 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 head like this 
probably one of those things that sells pretty well. It's like one of those, you know, like that Indian clay mask like thing. And it's like very basic. Like that's what it reminds me of. I'm actually kind of a fan of this kind of packaging. But you'll see right here, a lot of these have like a thousand reviews, 300, 400 reviews. Pricing is decent. But you'd have to know what you're selling for your the headache relief. Maybe you could bundle this with something else. Like, dang, $40 for this thing? Like, they're probably making some bank on this. So it's an ice pack. Also for migraines, that's interesting. Uh, but uh, I'm not a fan just because of the sheer number of the competition. I think there's better things out there unless you can dive into it. You might be able to find something if you dig into it a little bit deeper. Let's move on. Glass wipes. We're trying to avoid like baby wipes. Alcohol wipes. Oh crap, just another one of those that I just didn't expect had so much demand. Just wipes. Like those, like the, like the disposable alcohol wipes. I mean, it's cheap though. Like what kind of margins are you making at selling for $6? $6 is one of those things where I'm like, how the heck are you actually making money? And it's prime. And it's like got 200 of them in there. Like, how is that possible? I don't know. They're doing some voodoo magic and they're just like, they're, they have the ends with Amazon. Or there's just something I don't know. Probably something I don't know. The biggest challenge is differentiating this. Like, I, like a, a lot of other categories, it's like, Okay, everyone offers alcohol wipes. They all do the same like this. Your only really product differentiation is like the packaging and then like the quantity in reviews and, and pricing. Not really how you want to differentiate. Glasses cleaner. People still look for disposable cameras. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, it's very competitive. Some big, big players. <clears throat> 2,400 reviews, like, whew, man. Yep, and why am I even searching this? We decided that you can't really differentiate. Gotta get my swig of uh, booze in there. No, I'm just kidding. It's... I don't know. I don't know. Fuji Film. Fuji Film's got this on point, boys and girls.
It also probably means it's probably restricted. Disposable cameras, if like Fujifilm, they just have this on lockdown. Moving on. Shoe lift. Never thought that, huh? What can I say? Weightlifting shoes. What? 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 You know, I never thought, and now that I just looked into this, there's really never shoes that are specifically designed for weightlifting. And your feet take a lot of pressure when you lift weights. And the thing with like big brand like names like these that, that have these is like, they don't, in my mind, I want to see like a company that's specifically niched down only exclusively to sell weightlifting shoes, right? And not necessarily like a big brand that sells everything and it just so happens to also include weightlifting because it just seems like it would be like uh, like just a, a simple design whereas like someone might really be passionate about like shoes that are designed for weightlifting and that kind of thing. Arc support. Okay, let's get back in the zone here. I'm, I'm losing focus. Okay, so 145,000 for this. We're looking at 28,000 for compression copper support brace. It's, it's cheap, a lot of reviews, too competitive. We were just saying, boom, stacks of hundreds, hundreds of reviews. Stacks of hundreds though, you know what I'm saying? Um, okay, heel cushion. Heel cushion inserts. Heel cushion inserts. Mm, I feel like women would appreciate things like this for their high heels. Dang, not bad. So you see these guys that are multiple hundreds, right? But like I said with the other um, niche, there is depth to this market because there's not like a, a brand that's really just dominating. People are just really looking for a product that's priced well and that has good images and that kind of thing. So when there's a lack of brand loyalty, um, there is opportunity. There's potential in this. Um, Product testing is going to be one of those things that you're going to want to do. Uh, but dang, these things are cheap. Like I would have to consider like how I would... See, they're doing it better. Like they're selling for $17.99. They're just selling more stuff. That's what I would probably do. I'd be like, okay, you get all this jazz. Um, so buy mine. Which one was it? This one? And this one?
Heal painkiller. Oh, they included like a nice little shoe wipe. So what people are doing is they're trying a bunch of these heal things just to see which one probably like makes the most sense for them. This one's for the front. And this one's for the back. Oh my god, you know what you gotta do? You just gotta sell both. You gotta sell one for the front and one for the front. One for the front, one for the back. You bada bing, bada boom. Oh, that's why people are buying it together. See, like, that's a that's not a bad idea at all, okay? You just sell them together. This thing only sells the stuff for the back, and you sell things for the back and the front, so they get that complete package. It's designed to be for both the front and the back, whereas this one, they're toying with two different products, hopefully that they work in sync together. You know what I mean? And also, this one has a different color than this one. There's no way these two are going to match. So you want to make sure like something like these two match because like that's something important to them. That's why people are choosing for multiple colors. So you got the front and the back and that, my friends, would do well. Uh, it's okay, so let's let this up. Heel, cushion, inserts, bundle, both the heel and toes. Niche socks, like... Socks, socks. But maybe it's like silk socks, something like super weird and unique. Or like... I know wool socks are a thing. Like... Ankle socks. Like low, medium, high socks. Maybe like extra high socks. I think they call those like pantyhose or whatever. Or no, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> uh, smart wool toddler. Oh, like yeah, socks for babies. Everybody needs socks. Bombast socks. John's crazy socks. Looks like there's some real big brands in this. I was really looking for like specific, like. There we go, like cycling socks, socks for cyclers, you know. Black shoes, Nikes. Diabetic socks for men, like that's like, what? That's what you call like a hyper niche. It's not just socks, not just socks for men, not just socks for men with health problems, it's socks for diabetic men. But how, like, what, what does that entail? How would you have diabetic socks? Does it help with, like, blood circulation? I don't understand. Oh, extra wide? Circulatory casual. Big, big, big reviewers. It's going to be very difficult to get on the first page. Oh, I mean, like... Daily sales is actually not going to be too difficult, but to stay on the first page and to keep on getting sales, it's like things like socks uh, are very easy to promote on advertising channels, right? Because that's very giftable. It's usually very cheap and like so many people need it, right? Well, we, I mean, not so many, like everyone needs socks, right? So it's very easy to market um, commercial products like these, but like you run into big, big um, brands. But then you see like doctor's choice, silky toes, and this is how like how we avoid the like the big Nike and the Under Armour, that kind of those big brands, by going specific like niche down. Like Nike would not list their product as some kind of diabetic health kind of shoes, right? But there is a lot of reviews, so we're the bottom barrel. We're the snails, right? We are the snails.
This is this doesn't smell like uh, snail food to me. Warm socks from Pilates socks. Why would you need socks just for Pilates? Oh, to stop like slipping. Oh, okay, that's what Pilates looks like. Is Pilates exclusively for women? Guys do Pilates, right? Like stretching and like um. Um, yoga. But this is probably like a more. Mm -hmm. And so then actually this would be like, if you did your research, you would know that socks with grips is like one of the keywords you want to go after. But then also people that are looking for socks like this are going to be looking for like keywords with Pilates in there as well. And like, if you're trying to be really specific for Pilates, it's like socks, but it's specifically air socks. So there's air between going through the socks. It still absorbs sweat, but it, and also has grips at the bottom. So it has to meet those kinds of conditions. Let's avoid this niche because let's just not do that. Let's go back to the one before. Reviews are man more manageable. It's not going to be e easiest uh, niche to compete in, but lots of demand, depth in the demand as well. Um, easy to market, and like, like yoga, Pilates. Oh, it's such huge diehard niche. That's like uh, rock climbing times ten. Of people that are into like Pilates and yoga. See, like, this is what I mean. Like, this is the kind of thing where you get air, your socks. That's how, like, they differentiated their, their product. Because everyone else, they don't have breathable, like, toe parts. Well, this person does. But that's also why they're on the first page and they're doing well. You can do different colors. Right, that's your product differentiation here. Mm, so I would definitely do like the open toe stuff. I would mention somehow that it's like sweat absorbent. Somehow I'll say that it's sweat absorbent. And make it sweat absorbent. And I wonder if people kind of also want the socks to be taller, like as a fashion statement. Maybe I'm, I'm like, I don't know this. Maybe if you're a lady, you would know this a little bit better than I do, where you're like, oh, your friends, like, you have a friend that's wearing these socks and they're super cute, but they're like longer and then like, I don't know. You'd have to think about it. I will avoid this because this is not snail food material. Let's just skip socks. I'm probably going to see the same thing. Oily skin. Why do you ask? Everyone has oily skin. Everyone, 100% guaranteed. <laughs> In general, I've always thought that there hasn't been a lot of cosmetics for men. Like men get oily face and skin too. Maybe not so much skin, but face. And uh, I've never really known like, like a big brand that's like, Oh, that's like your brand for like for men for oily skin. But if like I was thinking deodorant and stuff, like I know big brands like Under Armour or not Under Armour, um, Axe, uh, Spice, Under Spice, Spice, something, some, and like men's. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying you just don't see it as much for men. It's like lotion, like no prob, you can find that anywhere, but like oily skin. This <clears throat> has potential somewhere in here. Somewhere in here, there is money. There is opportunity. Like black mask, CosRx, charcoal, facial steamer, Indian healing clay, toner, Neutrogena, face wash. It is like a lot of these are like for 
um, are for restricted categories, I believe. Well, ha health and household, you're going to have to... Um, pretty sure, not pretty sure, you have to get approved for it. What is bio oil? Oh, it's the brand name, just straight bio oil. I can treat my cotton rounds like... Amazon's big on this kind of stuff. African black soap, like what? what's the difference between black soap and African black soap? Oh, uh, you know what, maybe it's the, it's the brand? No, it's like a... I mean, that's cool, I guess. I just don't see like the, the difference. Could I just be like European black soap? Asian black soap and... That's it, that's the idea. You, you know, we've got our, our African black soap. Just come up with an Asian, raw Asian black soap. I, I might be coming off as super ignorant, but um, I think I'll stop while while I'm behind here. <laughs> yeah, tons of competition. There are tons of reviews. Let's get back to product here. Bentonite clay. Things we do to our for our skin to take care of our skin. Um, I am Korean. I know that Korean people have like a huge, huge like following for Korean like makeup stuff. So I know there's like opportunity there. But for some reason, I'm losing energy as I'm like looking at more and more into this niche. So I'll stop here. But like, if you're really into this niche, or you just know what the heck is going on, and like maybe there's just something that you just couldn't find, uh, definitely look into it. Now, like I said, what you want to do is you want to specifically search up like that product and selling on Amazon, on Google, Facebook, that kind of thing, as well as like the the category, just to make sure that there isn't any restrictions to selling that product. Usually, when you see a lot of depth for it, and you see a lot of different brands selling it. Um, you should be fine. Um, and even if you do have to get approved for that category, uh, it's not going to be as difficult as some other categories. Sometimes it's just like one click and you're boom, approved. You're like, oh, okay, cool. But I do want to get through this. My biggest problem when I was like looking at videos of people doing product research when I wanted ideas and had like different ways to do it was that the, sh the videos were so short. Like the videos were like 10, 15 minutes and I was like, I want you to do this for an hour. I want to really dive into your mindset and understand like what you would do in this situation or what about in this situation? What about in this situation as opposed to just like a couple of products that, that, you, that you found or searched for? You know what I mean? So that's what I was looking for and maybe most of you probably don't have time to watch all this this video all the way through, but um, at least for the 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 few of you that are that are looking that were looking for something like this, then hopefully you were able to get some some value. Certain dry sweat block. Sweat block. What a great brand name, Sweat Block. What do you guys do? I don't know. What do you think we do? Do you block sweat? <laughs> Bet we do. Sweat Block. Um, so it's a brand. What we're looking for is... Sometimes I get sweaty hands when I'm in front of my computer. 
uh, in the mouse and that kind of thing. So I've always wanted to know like how to go about like fixing that. And I think other people might be in the same situation I am, or maybe like uh, kind of embarrassing. But like when I when I used to go on dates, okay, when I used to, okay, when I was cool, um, my hands would get really sweaty. And sometimes I would look up and you like put chalk and stuff, or like you just wipe your hands every single second before you hold hands and that kind of thing. So I just kind of wanted to know like a solution for it. Oh, what liquid chalk? How is that not more popular? Liquid chalk. Can you get clear liquid chalk? Uh, the also, I, it looks like the, the, the problem with this as well is like liquid chalk is used for uh, many different things. So this one's for like uh, coloring and designing, right? And then these ones are for like powerlifting and sports. It almost looks like, like way too much, way too much um, sunblock. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. You wanna really be confident that your product is better than the rest of the people's on here before actually diving in if I was going to. Let's move on. I think I saw like back in the day, like some kind of like a football kick in that or something that had potential. So it goes to show you helium tents, not always going to be the best way to like find potential product ideas. Now, whether you do this technique, what I'm doing right now today, or whether you use like a filter box or that kind of thing, um, at the end of the day, once you find that product, you're going to be going through the same process that I've done this whole entire video where I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the sales, I'm looking at the reviews, I'm looking at what's potentially out there, I'm looking at uh, uh, related products, how I could bundle it. And I'm just running through that all through my head as I'm going along so I can just come up and, and clear through this list and see what I can come up with. Now, obviously, as you can tell, some of these actually came from another idea. I just used these as the base for uh, like my product research. And then from there, I was able to grab these. And then in the next video, what we'll do is we'll just take this list of ideas and then dive deeper into it and see where the the real opportunity is. That way we're going after the 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 primo de primo. Removable. What's a glue dot? Oh, they built a brand for themselves.
home decor, I think we kind of covered with like the Zen garden. Let's move on to like growlers. Do this be your growlers. Not bad. Not great. A lot of specialized bottles. But I think a growler actually, I don't I had I had this kind of thing in mind and also like like just the clear like growlers you can just bring. Like the one that I just saw here. It looks like it doesn't have that much uh, demand for it. It's going to be okay. We'll skip leather, okay? I think you guys get the idea. This is about two hours anyway. Um, hope you understand exactly how I got, I'll go about finding the products. Um, hope you liked um, what I had to say. Hope you learned a lot about how someone goes about finding products and use Helium 10 and, and potential ideas to come up with ideas and how to sift through them and to be able to come up with the most bottom barrel ideas that have less competition but still has potential and really understanding what it takes to actually determine why one product is better than the other. So it's not enough just to say Jungle Scouts numbers look good. It's not enough just to say price is good. It's not just enough to say that the images are good. You got to really look at your competition and imagine if you can uh, take another person's spot and be able to claim a spot there. And so most of the case, you're not going to be able to do that with larger niches and broader products, but you'll be able to do that with uh, hyper niche down uh, ideas. So uh, like it, like it. So we'll, we'll see you in the part two of this product research video. All right.